Racism did not always exist in our country. It was created. From the very beginning of African American history, there has been many examples of the government and law being directly discriminatory towards people of color. Racism started in America when African Americans were sold into slavery. They had no basic human rights and were treated as property. They were enslaved for a long time until the Civil War. The country was divided by the North and South. The North wanted to abolish slavery, but the South needed slaves in order to keep their plantations up and running. After many people died in this violent civil war, the North came out as victors and the African American slaves were liberated. But African Americans were still greatly discriminated against by white people in both the North and the South. The Jim Crow laws forbid any African Americans to use the same bathrooms and drinking fountains as white people. The law also did not allow African Americans to attend the same schools as white people. The law stated that even though they were separate, it still meant that they were equal to everyone else. Then when the Brown v. Board of Education case came up in the Supreme Court, the jury ruled that separate was indeed not equal and that every human being had the same right. Martin Luther King then stood up and spoke about discrimination and racism in our country. He made everyone see that African Americans do have the same rights as everyone else. After the Civil Rights Movement, all seemed good in the world. Black and white people now had equal rights in society. Since everyone is equal, there should be no more problems with race, right? This is the illusion that most white Americans have today. They think we are living in a post-racial America, where no matter what race you are, you are, you are given the same opportunities and privileges as everyone else. When the reality is that because of racial biases and in institutionalized racism, there is an extremely uneven playing field for anyone who is a minority. White people don't realize that racism is still actually a major problem in our society. I think that the reason racism still exists in America, and especially Chicago, is because of racial biases towards people of color, institutionalized racism, and racial stereotypes. From my experiences, I have noticed that most white Americans don't think that race is still an issue. But the reality is that in today's society, there is still a divide between white people and people of color. People think, oh sure, we've had our differences with African Americans in the past, but under the law, everyone is equal, so there shouldn't be a problem, right? But there still is a huge problem. Discrimination because of stereotypes towards African Americans and other people of minorities still exists in America today. On the first day of the elective I took called Implicit Bias and Racial Stereotypes, we all had to take a quiz to see if we had any racial biases against another race. My results were that I had a slight preference to European Americans. I learned to recognize that even I am biased towards people of different races, even when I'm not aware of it. I think most peop white people think that they are not racist, but really they are without realizing it. We read an article that on average, Amer African Americans earn less income than whites. This Maybe this is evidence that employers discriminate against them when looking to hire, but maybe not. The University of Chicago did a study to see if this was true. To test their theory to see if it was harder for a person of a minority to get a job over a white man, they mailed thousands of the exact same resumes to employers with job openings. The only difference on the resumes were the names. They put stereotypical Latino and African American names like Jamal and Juan on some of the resumes and on the other stereotypical white names like Brendan. They then measured which ones were selected for callbacks for interviews. The resumes with the stereotypical white names were 50% more likely to get an interview. By this study, we see that even though we might think everyone has equal opportunities, it is really not true. Typically, white people are implicitly biased towards minorities and would choose a white employee over an African American or Latino. I see this implicit bias in my workplace as well. My boss is a white male and went to New Trier High School and now owns his own restaurant. Me, myself, being a white female and attending New Trier High School, I feel like my boss really favors me. After only working there two short months, I got a raise on my working on my hourly pay from $8.75 to $9. Well, it took my fellow Latino co-worker more than six months of working there to get a pay raise. I don't know if race was directly correlated here, but I truly feel like I have an unfair advantage.
Of course, racial stereotypes and implicit bias of white Americans didn't form out of thin air. These racial biases towards minorities originated from stereotypes. These stereotypes are somewhat true. Most of minorities are living under the poverty line and are uneducated. This is the reason which makes white people assume that they are less qualified because they are a certain race. Majority of African Americans are living in poverty. They have no other choice but to live in projects. Most drop out of school and most end up getting into trouble with the law. I think that the main reason why the cycle of poverty amongst minorities exists in Chicago is because of the inequity in school funding. If kids were not able to receive a quality education, then they will never have the opportunity to go to college and get a good job. This is also another example of how racism is a problem. We are all supposed to be equal and we all are supposed to have the same opportunities to make money and to have a decent way of living. But the reality is that some people are given that opportunity while others are not. White people have so much more opportunity to do well in school and to make a lot of money, whereas African Americans and Latinos don't have the same privileges as white people do. Nutria High School spends around $22,000 per student, while Chicago Public Schools spend around $6,000 to $11,000 per student. There is an obvious inequity between these two schools. The reason for this in inequity is because of the way schools are funded in Illinois. The schools are funded based on property taxes. In the communities around Nutria, the homes in are huge and have very high property taxes. Therefore, there is more money for each student at Nutria. Whereas in poor places in Chicago where people are living in poverty, the homes have very low property taxes, which result in not a lot of school funding. So people who live in poverty are less likely to get out of it. Most of the family members probably didn't go to college and don't know how to give their children the support that they need to get through school and to do well. Even those who are able to go to college are still at a disadvantage over white people and are less likely to get hired for a good paying job. And for the kids who don't get to go to college, they spend the rest of their lives working minimum wage jobs and continuing the cycle of poverty in their communities. On the total opposite side of the spectrum, there is the North Shore and, the, and Nutrier. The majority of students who go to Nutria come from very wealthy families. Their parents have done very well financially in their lives and there is a pressure on Nutria kids to do well in school so that they too can make enough money to live, in, to live a comfortable lifestyle and to give their kids as much opportunity as possible. Kids at Nutria have a drive to do well and succeed and they definitely have the tools at their fingertips to follow any dreams that they have. At New Cheer, we have such an amazing selection of courses to pick from. We have an amazing, we have amazing facilities and unlimited opportunities to explore and learn. New Cheer does not use their funding towards New Cheer does use their funding towards great things to enhance their students' learning. I personally feel so privileged to be going to a school like New Cheer. My favorite part of school is glass art. No other high school in Chicago has a glass art program because it is such an expensive art medium. I am so blessed that I go to a school that has enough money to fund a program like this. Another thing that is unique about Nutria is the eggs program. I have had the opportunity to have this amazing alternative education experience with dedicated teachers who truly care about me exceeding in my work and challenging me to do better. I know that at any other high school, I would not have been given these amazing opportunities. In Social Service Board, we have been brainstorming some possible solutions to this problem. In the Constitution, it says that the state is responsible for the primary funding of each school. If the state gave each school an equal amount of this exchange, the goal of doing this exchange is to, is to have a discussion about what we can do about the inequality of school funding in Illinois. It's one thing just to talk about school inequality, and it's another thing to take action to try to change things. In the Constitution, it says that the state is responsible for the primary fun funding of each school. If the state gave each school an equal amount of money, then everyone would have equal opportunities to learn. Race will always be an issue worth talking about. As a country, we still have a long way to go until every citizen is truly equal. Hopefully in the near future, we will figure out a way to truly make everyone equal and give every student in Illinois an equal education opportunity. 
Once that happens, then hopefully implicit biases and racial stereotypes will slowly fade away and we can all truly be equal.